Hey guys, this is Fady from Harvey Productions. Welcome to another video. So I ran into this plugin the other day and I've been kind of messing with it and playing with it a little bit to kind of figure out what would that mean for all of us as studio owners and people who work with a control room and a live room. This plugin is called Room made by Ginger Audio. And the idea behind that plugin is that it gives you a full access to what a monitor controller would be or do but instead of being a physical monitor controller like my Grace design over here, it becomes like a plugin. I was a little skeptical about it, to, honestly, to start. And then I've been messing with it, downloaded it, installed it. I've been kind of playing with it a little bit. It's actually pretty impressive what it does. It might honestly be a game changer for those who don't want to spend money on a monitor controller right now. And they just want something to reroute audio for you, especially if your audio interface doesn't offer that feature. Like, uh, for example, the Apollo, the little Apollo solos or duos have some controls for a monitor controller switching speakers, only a couple of them, mute and dim. Not a lot of other features, but that's about it. This is honestly, I would say it's a, a game changer for those who don't have that. Also, how it connects to MIDI controllers, uh, it takes it up even another notch. So let's kind of take a quick look here and uh, stick around. I'm going to explain uh, my experience with it and some just practical examples of how, what to use it and how to use it. So when you download it, I've only been messing with it in a standalone mode. I have not done it as a plugin inside a DAW. So I'm going to be explaining today uh, the standalone mode. So it will just be uh, an app on your computer. I'm using Mac. They have Mac and Windows. Um, and this is what the app looks like. You can scale it, make it bigger or smaller. You can make it stay on the screen the whole time, or you can um, hide it or minimize it or whatever. And then as you guys can see, you got inputs on the left side, and then you got outputs on the right side. It's pretty straightforward. You got one, two, three, four, five inputs. And you got one, two, three, four, five outputs. So uh, scenario number one, I have this input and I am choosing what audio, like where's the input source coming from? I have a lot of stuff connected. So I'm using my Galaxy and my Galaxy, I have my main mix routed to input 57 and 58. So this would be my main mix, for example. And then I have mix B routed to input 59 and 60. So I'll go here. And I chose my Galaxy 59 and 60. And I'll, you can relabel it. So I'm going to call this Mix B. And then the first input, I'm going to call it Main Mix. And then now you go to Outputs. And basically in Outputs, you're selecting where does it go. And then according to your interface, which interface are you using, you get to route that channel to anything you want. So if you're using an Apollo and says you send it to output one and two, and then on your Apollo, you're choosing output one and two comes out to line output one and two. Um, choosing output three and four, and you decide that that goes to line output three and four, which would be a second set of speakers. So in this scenario, let's just, um, so this one, I'm sending it to output. So I'm going to do first one goes output one and two. And then um, let's say this is my MM27 speakers. And then this one, I'm going to send it to Galaxy output 3 and 4. And let's go, this is my i8 speakers, my Antelope i8 speakers. So at this point, really what I'm doing is I'm selecting an input, and I select which output does it go to. And you can see here when I select my MM27, it activates that one. When I select this, it activates this one. Or I select a different input. To, and it's just a mix of inputs, mix of outputs, which is basically a lot of the functionality in my Grace design here. On my Grace design, I have 16 inputs. I uh, got four pa uh, two pages, each have eight inputs, and then I have uh, three sets of uh, speaker outputs plus headphone outputs and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of just the same thing. So here's my input. Uh, let's say I'm going to play some track so you guys can see the input signal. I'm playing audio right now. I have the speakers muted. Um, it's playing through right here. You can see the signal. You can even adjust the gain for that signal if you want to, uh, to balance between different inputs and kind of match the gain structure. And then I am going to send that 
to this output or send it to this output. So right now, and obviously it was muted because I didn't have, I had the muted button on. So here you go, button is unmuted. Now I get to see the output signal coming out and then I can also control the output signal. You can see here I'm sending audio through both. Like I have audio coming into two channels. Uh, so my first source, second source, and I can select between sources and choose which source that I want as well as, which is really cool, is this called sum. And if you turn it on, basically at that point, I can uh, double sources. Like I can sum multiple sources into one output, which is very handy if I got multiple synth and uh, I, I could see so many practical applications to this. I got synthesizers and synth bass and multiple stuff and I sum them all to one output. So when I select that one, uh, or one input, I'm sorry. So when I select all these summed, I can send them to a specific place. I, mean, I can see multiple applications to something like this. Now, uh, let me just pause the audio. Um, this is, you're selecting this is going to queue or not and how much is going to the queue and where that queue goes to. You could also select a talkback input. So if you got a USB, so a studio who does not have a built-in talkback mic. So in a case like this, I'll get like a, a basic, uh, even like you got a camera, a webcam that has a built-in mic in it or something, I have a webcam. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and select it, why not? So uh, my webcam is the Logitech, here you go. And you guys can see here, I select it, and you can see I'm talking, and here is me talking uh, happening there. And then if I activate a talkback, and then I choose where that talkback goes. And then now the, and then it automatically dimmed my audio channel. And then now that talkback is gonna go somewhere, um, which is really cool uh, because it's, it's very uh, intuitive. And then all of these features uh, are MIDI assignable. So I tried to kind of test it and I'm, I'm using here my, um, I have a little MIDI controller, this one this one, which is by Intech Audio. So I basically, really quick, wanted to assign. So I went to Input Source 1, and I click MIDI Learn, and then I'm gonna select this. And then now when I fire select that button, it activates or deactivates that input. So I can assign one for my talkback. So I go here, MIDI Learn, and assign a different one. So now I'm pressing the controller and it's activating and deactivating my talkback. Same as your master volume. So here's the volume for the mono controller going between stereo, mono. Listening to mid only, which is actually a really cool feature that most of the monitor controllers don't have that feature. Listening to sides only, flipping a phase on only one side and messing with phase. Uh, soloing one speaker, left speaker, right speaker. Um, and then this is dim control. This is mute. And then these are three preset saved for reference volume. So my first one is set at zero dB. My second one is set at negative nine, you know. And then you got sample rate, you got panning left and right. And then that sample rate, I'm pulling it from my Galaxy. I'm using Galaxy as my master clock. So right now it's at 48. So this is pulling 48. Um, and then uh, they actually have a meter in built in here. So if I play back the song, you guys can see it's almost like you get your own LFU, LUFS meter. And then you get to also choose what streaming platform you want to reference into. So if I'm going to reference it to Apple Music and click start, and it shows you where your signal is going to be on that one, um, which is just kind of like a, a basic metering uh, functionality. Now, here's another feature that is actually really cool. Now, on, uh, I'm going to pause the audio. And I'm going to, um, on any of the inputs or any of the outputs, you can throw in one plugin, two plugins. You can throw plugins on the inputs or the outputs. Uh, what's the advantage? So, for example, I got my MM27, which is what I'm sending to my barefoot. But I want to apply a specific EQ to compensate for a specific frequency in my room, which in, in my case, I'm 
using my grace design for this. But for somebody who doesn't have the grace design, so you'll go here to effects and you just put something. So I put the fat filter EQ uh, on it. So when I open the fat filter EQ, this is now an, an EQ happening on my main speaker. And I can clean stuff up. I can take stuff, just EQ. I can put, now this could be any place. Uh, another application, for example, let's say output number D, I will send that to a separate set of headphones and I'm going to use the Slate VSX headphones, which means I need to use the plugin to monitor. So instead of throwing that in my DAW, I just have that monitor controller and whenever I select output D, it goes to the headphone outputs on my um, dedicated outputs on my interface that are going to a headphone preamp or something. And then that output always have the Slate plugin on it. So then I'm listening with the proper emulations in this case. Um, also the input, I don't know what I would use uh, EQ on the input for, but they have it. Well, I guess, well, actually I take that back. I got a TalkBack mic and it's too boomy and I want to clean it up or compress it or, you know, make it sound a little bit better for the artists out there. So I can just add uh, that on the TalkBack and I can add that EQ on it. Um, and then because all of these features are MIDI assignable and they do integrate with Stream Deck, we do, do integrate with Avid Yukon Control and they do integrate with a couple other stuff, it, it makes it really cool because all what I need, some form of a, a little MIDI controller, something like this, or, or anything you want. It could be something bigger if you want to control more stuff. And then uh, I need that software, which I believe it's about 150 bucks for this one. And then they have another one that is for more like Dolby Atmos, uh, so multi-speaker setup and stuff like that. This is more for stereo setup only. Or if you have a Stream Deck, you don't even need this, use the Stream Deck. And then you got yourself a fully customizable MIDI controller. And you're not doing any conversion. You're not worried about audio quality because at the end of the day, all the audio is coming from your interface. So if you have an interface you're happy with quality-wise, then I would recommend this over cheap monitor controllers. Now, nicer or more expensive monitor controllers come with their advantages, and especially if they have converters or DSP EQs or stuff like that, like my Grace, that's a different story. But this is a 150 bucks solution that beats all the other cheap monitor controllers way, way better. It's a lot more versatile. It helps you with some form of room correction. Um, it really is a, a really cool plugin. It's a genius idea. I could also see uses for it, um, not in monitor controller world. It's it's becoming like a, a route an audio routing thing. So if I have a Zoom session with an artist, and I can take audio from one place and send it to another place, and then create a talkback and then mute it and, or activate the talkback. It's kind of become like a a virtual desk where I got several inputs, I got several outputs, and I'm controlling those via MIDI controller, and I'm sending audio in different places and uh, recognizing it as a playback engine inside like Zoom or uh, whatever video software that I'm using for my meetings. Anyways, I hope this is um, helpful, uh, especially for those who uh, don't want to spend money on monitor controller right now. I would highly recommend this. I think this is a great idea and then it gives you all the basic functionality of a monitor controller that you currently need without having to spend a lot of money until you uh, can buy a decent monitor controller that you know it won't affect uh, the quality in your room. I hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, uh, please put it in the comments below. I'll try to answer it as much as I can and uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys at the next video.